everyone. I hope you're having a great start to the week. You may be able to hear it raining outside. It's really stormy out there. I wanted to sit down today and talk to you about some of my favorite things from the past few months. I really enjoy doing this and I love hearing from you in the comments section down below. So let me know what things you have been enjoying recently. I have some stuff that I have pulled off my shelves and from my wardrobe and some things that I have to recommend that I can't hold in my hands, such as the first one, which was a weekend away. Definitely can't hold that. Uh, I was gonna say I can't show it to you, but actually it was vlogged, just not by me. So I'll link the video down below. So I went to Suffolk for the weekend at the beginning of November with Lauren and Lauren and Jean and Mercedes. We went away for a reading weekend. We ate lots of yummy food. We played board games, we read books. We went to a place called Wynyard Hall, which was very beautiful. It had a farmer's market. It was great and Lauren, from Lauren Wade Reads vlogged the weekend. I'll insert a tiny clip of that here, but go and check out her whole video because it's lovely and it's lovely to have that memory actually to watch as well, which is one of the great things about being on YouTube. And it's also why I like to film these videos because then I can look back and remind myself about all the great things. So that was a really lovely weekend. And Mr. M and I also went away to the New Forest for a weekend a few months ago. And we had a really, um, I was gonna say bizarre experience, it's not that bizarre, but it was just quite funny and it felt like it should be in a children's book. So in the New Forest, all of the farmers release their pigs for panage, which is where they release them for six weeks and they roam free and wild. In the New Forest, the ponies and cows are out all year round anyway, so it is just, you know, animal, I was gonna say animal city, it's not, it's the countryside, you get what I'm saying. Um, and it was just really lovely. And we thought we were going after Panage, which we were, but it had been extended because the weather had been quite mild, you know, climate change. Um, and there was one pig who we called Penelope, who used to wait for us to come for a walk every day. So every day we went for a walk with her and she was just waiting for us. I have since look, looked up Panage as a hashtag on, on um, Instagram and I have seen her walk with other people. So it wasn't just us that she loved, but she clearly liked human interaction. So we went for a walk with her and then we also came across um, one of our favorite Shetland ponies uh, who is tiny, who we call Kevin. And Kevin also came on the walk with us. And when I say coming on a walk, I really mean that we went walking with this pig. I will insert some video evidence here. And it was just kind of hilarious because Kevin and Penelope were basically the same size as each other. Again, I will insert some footage here. And Kevin was really not sure about Penelope, but then decided that he would be friends with her and came along on the walk. And I, I filmed this because I just found the whole thing really amusing. So I'll link the Instagram post with all of the short videos down below. Loved it. It was great. Um, next favourite, every year, Much Ado Books in um, Sussex send me a stocking that they have made because they are absolute sweethearts. I first met Kate and Nash in 2014. I was on book tour and I was talking about the bookshop book and I stayed with them for a few days and it's where I started writing Franklin's Flying Bookshop. Um, every year they make stockings to raise money for charity. I'll leave details down below. They're brilliant. And then they also gift me a stocking as well. So this is the one they made for me this year, which is the most adorable thing. Love it so much. So it's a stocking of Franklin and Luna go to the moon. They're just the best. Honestly, aren't booksellers and librarians just the best? Um, when I was in Suffolk, I mentioned that we went to Wynyard Hall. And when I was there, I found this hat. And this kind of hat has been what I've worn since then, since the beginning of November, this is what I have been wearing. As you probably know, I wear headscarves, um, well, I wear beanies and headscarves in the summer. That's kind of my alopecia style for the summer. It's kind of too cold to wear that in the autumn, winter. And if I wore that inside, I'd then have to wear a woolly hat to go out and I'd just be constantly changing. And given that I don't feel comfortable not wearing a hat in public because of having alopecia. The changing around is just, it's not a feasible thing. But also wearing woolly hats exclusively outdoors and indoors feels a little bit odd. Um, so I wanted something that was in between, something that was warmer than a headscarf, but not as cumbersome as a woolly hat. And I used to try and wear Baker Boy hats when I was younger and I didn't think I really suited them. I think it's because I used to wear them with my hair up and I really like this. So this is from a company called 
um, Seaburger. They are a German company. And so I bought this one um, when I was there and then I found uh, two more of theirs online. So I have a navy one and a maroon one and this is just my uniform now, which yeah, they're great. So I thought I would mention those as a favorite. This Christmas, I was given this mug from my mum. As we all know, I love a good teacup. Um, I have lots of big teacups. Um, I actually made a video talking you through my teacup collection because it's that extensive. I will link that video down below if you feel so inclined. Um, but yes, this was one that she bought me for Christmas. I'm not sure where she got it, maybe TK Maxx. Um, and I just think it's the cutest thing. So also a favorite. Speaking of Christmas, um, I was gifted two items of clothing this Christmas from friends. This one is from Lena. If you don't follow her channel, you should. She's just Lena Norms. And she bought me this pinafore, which is so, beautiful it has this paisley pattern on it's corduroy it fits like a glove and she found this in a charity shop um and it's by the company run and fly who made the fox dungarees that i have which you may have seen me wear before they're really really fabulous and i would like it's hard to show this so i'll insert a picture of me wearing it i love it and what a great find and jean gifted me this which is a jumper that she also found in a charity shop, but then she embroidered on it. So she sewed lavender on it because this is a lavender colored jumper. And I just thought this was a really lovely gift to have something that has been personalized by a friend. So I look forward to reading this when the we reading this, <laughs> I'm so used to saying that. I look forward to wearing this is what I meant to say. When we were in Suffolk, Lauren from Lauren and the Books introduced me to a new board game which has become a favourite and this is Harry Potter Labyrinth. It's kind of hard to show it to you in its box so I'll do a cutaway so that you can see what it looks like. Um, essentially you have to move pieces around the board in order to create pathways for you to get to a character. It's not high stakes, it's quite relaxed, very easy to learn and I think suitable for lots of different ages as well. In fact on the front it says from ages 7 to 99 so there we go. There is a non-Harry Potter version of Labyrinth as well but I mean this one was fun. I mean I enjoyed it so much that I bought it pretty much immediately. And another game that I have fallen in love with recently is this one here called Quacks of Quendenberg. It's my favourite game of the moment. Mr M and I bought it in Ork's Nest which is a wonderful board game shop in Seven Dials in Covent Garden and it won um, quite a few awards so we trusted that it would be good and this one is not Harry Potter related but you can kind of pretend it's Harry Potter related again I'll do a cutaway so you can see what it looks like each of you is given a cauldron you can pick either red green blue or yellow and then you have to put potions ingredients into your cauldron the more ingredients you put in the more points you get but if you put in the wrong combination of ingredients then your cauldron explodes it is so much fun I'll talk about it more in my favorite board games video which I will film in the next few weeks because this is definitely one of my favorite board games now where is my notebook because I know I had a few other things to mention that I don't have um, to hand. Oh yeah, something that I've been enjoying uh, over the past few months is the Harry Potter ASMR rooms. I'm not sure if I've mentioned them in a previous favourites, but I found them really comforting during the winter months, especially when I was reading. They helped me focus as well as help with anxiety and all of that stuff. My favourite over Christmas was the Grimmauld Place Christmas Harry Potter ASMR room. You may not want to have that on in the background anymore because it had Christmas music in but there are so many other ones there are lots of different ones for all the different common rooms it's lovely I'll link the channel down below um speaking of Christmas and vlogmas I really enjoy Lauren over at Lauren in the books vlogmas videos my favorite of hers was a cooking challenge that she did it was like ready steady cook um which is a show in the UK in the 90s I think where contestants had to buy ingredients for under 10 pounds and then present them to a chef and they had to make something with those ingredients so she did that challenge with her friend and then they had a competition and i loved watching that it was so creative i'll link that video in the description box down below okay so you're getting this really high quality cut in right now i am editing the video and realized that i didn't speak about his dark materials the tv series and so many of you have been messaging me asking me if i will talk about it 
because you know it's my favorite book series of all time um so yeah I, I did mean to include it it was definitely a favorite not a favorite of all time but I really enjoyed it I especially loved the first episode here are my quick slightly incoherent thoughts Roger was the best the actor playing Roger was brilliant I love Lee Scoresby and I love Lynn manuel Miranda and I was just not sure that I was going to love both of those things together because they're so not what I pictured. He's so much younger than I imagined but he was incredible. I loved him as Lee Scoresby. I thought Europe was fantastic. For the most part I thought the actress who played Lyra was good. I think that the two main flaws for me in the series were that the dialogue wasn't that great and I felt as though some of the time the actors overacted in order to convey their emotion because they had such few lines. Um, and my other quibble, which I think is many people's quibble, is that, uh, quibble is such a funny word, is that demons weren't shown enough. And I know it's expensive, it's CGI, but I did feel as though that meant that if you hadn't read the books, you wouldn't understand how important demons were. Um, I loved that they included Will in the first series. It made complete sense to me so that they don't have to do his backstory at the beginning of The Subtle Knife. I thought that was wonderful. I thought Lord Boreal was great. I wasn't completely sold on the magisterium scenes, but I just don't know how you would film that in a way that didn't feel a little bit hyperbolic. So I, I was okay with that. Yeah, I just thought on the whole it was so well done my expectations I had deliberately tried to keep them quite low because I wasn't a fan of the film but I thought this was brilliant and Ruth Wilson I love that woman I love that woman so much and she makes such a great Mrs Coulter so on the whole yes I really enjoyed it so if you are also a big fan of the books you felt let down by the film and you've been scared to watch the tv series I would give it a go, honestly. I think they're doing a fabulous job. And my final favourite is Hoppers, which is a Sri Lankan restaurant in London. They have a few different um, locations, two at the moment, and I think they're opening one in King's Cross next month. And it's just really delicious. I would recommend getting the set menu and get a hopper, which is, um, I was gonna say, it shares similarities with an Ethiopian pancake, but it's fluffier. Check out their website, I'll link it down below delicious. So those are all of my winter favourites. I would love to know what kind of things you have been enjoying in a comment down below. Please let me know. I hope you all have a great week and I will speak to you very soon. Lots of bookish love. Bye.